Good morning. Uh, my name is Bijan Tadayon, and I am here with Mr. Mohammad Gayur, the president of the USPTO Intellectual Property Society of Iranian Americans. He is a supervisory patent examiner with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. I am also a former patent examiner and a member of National Intellectual Property Society of Iranian Americans. One of the shared goals of uh, both of our new societies is to highlight the significant contributions of Iranian Americans to in science, engineering, art, and intellectual properties. That's why uh, we are very much thankful to you, Dr. Zadeh, especially for giving us this opportunity to have this discussion. Uh, you are the father of fuzzy logic. There are thousands of patents related to the fuzzy logic worldwide. There are 22 technical journals with the word fuzzy in the title alone. Fuzzy theory is being used in the wide variety of applications and industries. What led you to fuzzy logic and how was it conceived? Well, uh, before I answer your question, uh, let me express to you my appreciation uh, for your coming here all the way to Berkeley to interview me. Uh, I am pleased to have this opportunity uh, to answer some questions you may ask. And I also want to tell you that I'm very impressed uh, by the fact that you are uh, organizing, have organized perhaps, uh, this uh, Intellectual Property Society for Iranian Americans. And I should like also to say that uh, in giving talks in various places, particularly in cities in which uh, there are many people from Iran, uh, uh, I, I'm always impressed. I'm always impressed by the fact that Iranians have achieved positions of responsibility uh, in this country. And I think it's probably one of the most successful uh, group of immigrants to come to the United States. Now, having said that, uh, let me comment on the first uh, question. Actually, uh, it's not a simple question. It's not a simple question. So uh, when I wrote my first paper on the fuzzy sets in 1965, uh, the reaction was mixed. Most of the people who commented were negative. Now, in part, it has to do with the word fuzzy. In English language, fuzzy is usually used in a pejorative sense. That means not in a good sense. So when I wrote my first paper on fuzzy sets, uh, what I was looking for was a name for classes which do not have sharply defined boundaries. How to call them? I could not think of a name that was respectable and accurate. So I finally decided to use the word fuzzy, meaning unsharp. But I knew very well that it's the kind of word that will give some trouble. And indeed, it did. So there are many, many people who reacted unfavorably to anything connected with fuzzy, fuzzy set theory, fuzzy logic, because they thought this is not serious, really. This is some something, some guy who doesn't know what he is talking about, talking about fuzzy sets. Uh, in fact, uh, Senator Proxmire, at that time a senator from Wisconsin, uh, he was looking at the budget of the National Science Foundation, and he found National Science Foundation is supporting a project on fuzzy sets. And he became very concerned about that. And he wrote a letter to the National Science Foundation. Why are you supporting such nonsense <laughs> as fuzzy sets? And he was going to give me Golden Fleece <laughs> Award. This award was given to people who were supported by the National Science Foundation and receiving taxpayer support for something that didn't make any sense. <laughs> 
So I got the letter from National Science Foundation saying that he wants to give you this award. Please say something. So I finally persuaded Senator Proxmar not to give this award to me, but this was pretty close. This just to give you an idea of what happens when you use a word that is not really a popular word. But this is not the only explanation. And uh, what is very deep-seated in our culture uh, is uh, Aristotelian logic. A logic in everything is either true or false. There is multivalued logic in which truth is a matter of degree. But fuzzy logic goes far beyond multivalued logic. So basically, fuzzy logic is a logic of classes which do not have sharply defined boundaries. That's really what fuzzy logic is. But because it's not in the spirit of classical logic, there are some people who were critical for that reason, not so much because of the word fuzzy, because they simply don't believe in partiality of truth. But what you describe does not apply to all countries. In English-speaking countries, the word fuzzy had a negative effect. But in other countries, this was not so. In Japan, fuzzy is one of the good words. In fact, fuzzy got sort of an award, medal, whatever, in Japan. So they use it on many, many products. They say fuzzy. If you buy a washing machine, fuzzy. If a microwave oven, fuzzy. Television is fuzzy, but not in the United States. They don't do it. So in any case, uh, what happened then is that uh, in 1966, a year after the publication of my paper, I received letters from Japan saying they saw the paper, they're very much interested in, and they would like to do some research one year later. And so in Japan, fuzzy logic became very popular. In other countries, in the Soviet Union, very popular. In China, very popular. In European countries, popular. So that what you describe applies mostly to the United States and some English-speaking countries, but not to other parts of the world, not to other parts of the world. And uh, uh, so uh, it is indeed very popular in many places and one of the most important applications, visual applications. In Japan, subway system in the city of Sendai, which is not far from Fukushima. The subway system in the city of Sendai uses fuzzy logic. It was, the work started by, in 1976, not long after my first paper. It went to the operation, it took 10 years, in 1987, the system started functioning. Now, subway system is not a toy. It's not a toy. But the fact that in Japan, they decided to spend 10 years on the construction of this fuzzy logic subway system tells you that the reception was positive in Japan. And so today you would see many, many products use fuzzy logic. Digital cameras, almost all digital cameras use fuzzy logic. And uh, automobile transmissions, all kinds of things. So in any case, what I wanted to say is that what you say is true, but it's a mixed picture. Some people were critical, some people were positive, now, so far as I'm concerned, I did not react badly to criticism. I did not get myself into fights with people who said that physiologic is nonsense. On the contrary, I said, you are my friend, 
I accept your criticism. Some people in my department here, right here in Berkeley, are very skeptical about physiologic. Fine, we are friends, uh, skeptical. And so in my life then, I have never been hesitant to be alone, alone. And I have a photograph of myself uh, at the University of Iran uh, in my room, and I have a sign above my desk say Adin. Adin in Russian means alone. So I wanted to advertise that. At the University of Tehran, I also had opinions which were very different from the opinions of other people. So you're right. So I would uh, say that my advice to people who find themselves in a situation where their views are unpopular, not to be uh, scared not to give in, not to surrender, but press their case.